Nightcrawler. He's one of the coolest X-Men characters, so let's talk about him. What's up my comic comrades with Marvel's Fall of X story in full swing, we've got X-Men on the brain and one of our favorites is Nightcrawler. In fact, Nightcrawler is a fan favorite in general, which is why he's been portrayed in multiple animated series and twice in live action. So we're going to break down the character's comic book history to explore where he came from, what his major story arcs have been, what his power set is, and leave you guys with some essential reading recommendations to top it all off. So let's get into it. Nightcrawler first appeared in Giant Size X-Men issue 1 in May of 1975. He was created by Len Wein and Dave Cockrum. Now, the real-world origin of Nightcrawler is pretty crazy. You see, originally, artist David Cockrum created the character for DC Comics. It was supposed to be a demon from hell that messed up a mission, so instead of going back to hell and facing the devil's wrath, he decided to stay on Earth. At which point, he would become the sidekick for the character Cockrum created called the Intruder. Cockrum would submit his character to DC to be part of the Legion of Superheroes universe, but DC rejected the idea. Like all great creators, they don't give up, they just hang on to that character and wait it out. Flash forward, Cockrum would end up working for Marvel on X-Men starting in 1975. It's around this time that Marvel editor Roy Thomas wanted to create a new lineup for the X-Men that came from all different walks and backgrounds of life. Cockrum then decided to use Nightcrawler, giving him a new backstory and German background, and obviously making him a mutant. From here, the rest was literally comic book history, as he would make his debut in Giant Size X-Men issue 1. But now that you know a little bit about his real-world origin, let's take a look at his fictional one. So we're given Nightcrawler's origin in Giant Size X-Men issue 1, or at least the back half of it, as it's greater explained in Uncanny X-Men Origins Nightcrawler issue 8. At the very beginning of the issue, we see a young woman on the run. She's frightened and being driven into the German country while holding her newborn. As we see a group of villagers with pitchforks and torches all Frankenstein style saying, do you see the witch? She ran that way toward the waterfall. The comic then says the people she lived among now want her dead, but she is not the helpless prey she pretends to be. She in truth is a manipulator the world will come to know as Mystique. As a metaphor because she has the power to alter her physical appearance. As we see her disguise herself as one of the villagers saying, neighbors, look what I have. I have found the demoness hiding here and threw her over the cliff. Now I have her foul spawn. It's time this creature joined her down in the pits of Hades, as she throws her own child in the river. Miraculously, however, the baby survived the water and the dark night. The next morning, a gypsy woman would find the baby and take him in as her own. Even upon discovering he was a baby like no other, a mutant, who would become known as Nightcrawler. That's right, this issue of Nightcrawler's origin revealed that Mystique is his birth mother. A fact that has some of you a bit mind blown right now. Not you, of course, but the other guy over there frantically typing into Google to see if it's true. Yeah, that dude definitely had no idea. And speaking of Mystique, how would you like to meet her? Well, you can because she'll be appearing in one of her human forms, Rebecca Romaine from the X-Men movie franchise, later this month at Rose City Comic Con. The human form part is best because kids will be present and clothes are probably a good idea. Just saying. Comic cons are always an amazing way to bring the geek community together and meet some of our favorite celebrities and artists. And today's sponsor, Portland's Rose City Comic Con, is among the best. Rose City is a fun, family-friendly, three-day celebration of comics, gaming, sci-fi, cosplay, anime, fantasy, and every fandom in between. This year's celebrity guests include Guardians of the Galaxy Zoe Zeldana and Karen Gillan, Doctor Who's Arthur Darvill and Alex Kingston, eight cast members from Critical Role, as well as Ralph Macchio, Felicia Day, and a long list of others. They also have epic comic creators like Arthur Adams, Coley Hammer, and Dustin Wen, just to name a few. There's also going to be a 3,000 square foot Star Wars fan experience where you could check out a Mandalorian throne, jail cell, and forge set, climb into an X-Wing cockpit, and get a behind the scenes look at incredible Star Wars props and costumes. On top of all of that, they'll have the autograph and photo ops, video and tabletop gaming, the forever fun cosplay, and a million other great experiences. It all goes down at the Oregon Convention Center September 22nd through the 24th. Buy your badges now at RoseCityComicCon.com or use our link below. And when you use code VARIANT, you'll get $5 off regular three-day and single-day badges. So don't procrastinate, grab your badges for Rose City Comic Con right now. Okay, so after the reveal that Mystique is Nightcrawler's birth mother in X-Men Issue 1, the issue tells us that despite being abandoned as an infant, Kurt Wagner would go on to enjoy a childhood most would envy. Margal, his adoptive gypsy mother, was a fortune teller in a traveling circus, raising him alongside her two biological children, a son and a daughter. Kurt loved his adoptive siblings and would do anything for them. So 
when him and his adopted brother Stefan became blood brothers, Stefan said, I fear the dark side of my soul. Swear to me, Kurt, if I ever turn evil, if I ever take innocent life, that you will kill me. Kurt thinks he's joking, but his brother is serious, forcing Kurt to swear. Years would pass and Kurt grew to have a thirst for adventure. Life in the circus had imparted a love and admiration for the zest embodied in his boyhood idol, Errol Flynn. Because of this, Kurt would sneak into a theater one day and see his idol's film by hiding in the rafters, but eventually was spotted by a security guard yelling demon as several of the people started chasing him with Kurt saying, these people hate me. They want me dead because I look different. And that night, Kurt learned firsthand that not all people are as accepting as those in the circus. When he ran home to his mother and she found him afraid, she said, I am disappointed in you, Kurt. I did not raise you to crawl like a worm. We are proud people. We deal with our problems. We do not run from them. But you look like you have much to learn. So she forced him to be trained by a trapeze master in the circus to learn discipline. Over time, Kurt would become a master acrobat and legend of the circus and known as the death-defying Nightcrawler. So Kurt got his X-Men name from the circus, which is pretty cool. Anyway, one day while his sister was performing a tightrope act, she fell and Kurt saw, which instinctively triggered his mutant teleportation ability for the first time, teleporting to her in an instant, catching her and saving his sister's life. After discovering this amazing ability in the following months, Kurt developed and honed in on this skill, mastering it and even incorporating it into his circus act. Now, as time passed on, Kurt would become the highlight and center of the circus, winning the love and admiration of his sister, but Stefan became bitter and jealous, so much so, Kurt discovers that one day Stefan had killed several mutant kids, with Kurt asking, what have you done? His brother replies, you. It was you who stole my place in the circus, and the heart of my sister. You, the demon who forced me out. No more devils shall walk the earth, even if I have to kill every child who shows signs of becoming a beast like you. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. At this point, Kurt lunges towards his brother, remembering the oath he swore in blood to his brother all those years ago. An oath that had to be honored. Though it tore apart Kurt's soul, he knew that his brother had to be stopped. So as he promised all those years ago, he stopped his brother, but when he kicked him, he fell back and hit his head on a rock killing him. This tore Kurt up as he started crying over his brother saying, please wake up. At this point, a hunter shows up saying, hey, what's going on here? Those bodies, you beast, you slaughtered them. But as we know, it was not Kurt at all. In fact, it was his human brother. This forces Kurt to go on the run in Germany, which leads us directly to giant size X-Men issue one. In the issue, Nightcrawler's on the run in Germany, being chased with pitchforks and torches by the Germans, and now we know why. Only for Charles Xavier to show up saying, stop, turning off everyone's mind around him, except for Kurt's. Kurt asks, you did this to them, but how? Why? Charles replies, I heard you say you came here to learn, my friend. I am a teacher. I run a school for gifted youngsters, such as yourself. A school for mutants. Kurt says, mutant? Yes, I've heard the word. Charles then says, you and I are mutants. I can help you find your true potential. Kurt asks, Charles, can you help me be normal? Charles replies, after tonight's misfortune, Kurt, would you truly want to be normal? With Kurt saying, perhaps not. I only want to be the whole Kurt Wagner. Then they shake hands with Kurt saying, if you can make me that teacher, I will go with you. And the rest is history as Kurt Wagner obviously goes to the States with Charles and trains under him, becoming one of the most legendary X-Men of all time. So of course, Nightcrawler being one of the most loved X-Men has had some great storylines over the years, so we're going to go over a few of the best. First and foremost, we have Giant Size X-Men Issue 1. As I mentioned earlier, this is his origin issue, although his origin would be flushed out in great detail later on in Uncanny Origins Nightcrawler Issue 8, as we just went over. Besides Marvel giving us a detailed origin of Nightcrawler's youth, they would even give us the origin of his conception, telling us how Mystique became pregnant with him and reveal who his father is. This all went down in Uncanny X-Men Issue 428. In the issue we see around 20 years in the past in Germany, we learn that Raven, aka Mystique, was married to Baron Christian Wagner. He was a good husband to her, but was unable to give Raven a child. Because of his infertility, this caused problems between him and her. It also led to her having affairs with other men. Along the way, she would end up sleeping with fellow mutant Azazel, who essentially seduced her in a church. This led to her becoming pregnant with Azazel's child. She ends up telling Azazel and he tells her, how wonderful for you, my dear. What does the Baron think of all this? She responds, it doesn't matter. I don't want the Baron. I never loved him. But you, Azazel, I love you. He just looks at her saying, fascinating. I wouldn't have thought you capable of such an emotion. She asks, why are you being so cold? I thought, I hoped you would be pleased. He responds, pleased? Of course I'm pleased, although not for the reasons you might want me to be. It's after all simple science, and it worked as I had hoped, but it's hardly cause for any outpouring of emotion. Raven replies, I thought you loved me. He says, never confuse passion for condition of the heart, my dear. Since the dawn of mankind, the two have rarely gone hand in hand. Now go back to the Baron, stay safe and warm in the cozy, comfortable, protected little world you've married into, and raise our child. Child, my child. 
At this point, she goes back to her husband and when he gets suspicious with her being pregnant, knowing he can't impregnate her, she kills him. From here, she would give birth to Kurt alone and we all know where it goes from there. Anyway, this is a really good story that gives us even more insight to Nightcrawler's origin, revealing to us who his father is and how he was conceived. And if you aren't familiar with Azazel in the comics, you might remember him from X-Men First Class. I also want to briefly mention the X-Men Origins Nightcrawler one-shot. This is a retelling of Nightcrawler's origin with minor changes and updates. One of the biggest being adding the religion aspect to Nightcrawler's backstory, but we're not going to go into detail about this as we've gone over his origin plenty already. Anyway, next up we have the Nightcrawler 4 issue miniseries from 1985 written and drawn by his creator Dave Cockrum. This is an all-time classic and staple story for Nightcrawler as it was his first solo series and it was completely done by Nightcrawler's creator. In the first issue of the series, we see Nightcrawler training in the danger room with the help of Kitty Pryde. After the training session, Kurt starts chatting with Kitty and Rasputin, telling them a story about the X-Men villain Vanish and a strange dimensional wormhole known as the well at the center of time. At which point Kitty decides to try to recreate said well inside the danger room. But things go wrong and instead of recreating a simulation of the well, she actually opens up the portal to the well itself. At this point, Lockheed, Kitty's little purple dragon, gets sucked in and teleported to an alien dimension full of swashbuckling pirates and magic. Of course, Nightcrawler jumps in to save Lockheed and encounters alien pirates, giving him the adventure he's always wanted as he grew up idolizing Errol Flynn, who played a pirate. This series is just pure classic Nightcrawler goodness. Next up, we have the 2013 Amazing X-Men Volume 2 issues 1 through 5. The first five issues deal with the death and return of Nightcrawler. You see, prior to this in X-Men Messiah Complex, Nightcrawler was killed. And the first five issues of this series shows us how the X-Men are dealing with his death. But as the story progresses, the X-Men learn that their blue teleporting friend might not be gone forever. They can probably get him back. So Wolverine, Beast, Storm, Iceman, Firestar, North Star, and so on go to get their friend back. With this relaunch of the X-Men title, Jason Aaron and Adam McGuinness brought Nightcrawler back in the series and basically went back to basics as this story arc is heavily inspired by the previous mentioned 1985 Nightcrawler 4 issue miniseries. This story is all about Nightcrawler and swashbuckling, except this time, a pirate version of his dad is getting in on it. Then after his return in 2014, he would get his own series once again that lasted 12 issues. Essentially, the series deals with Nightcrawler returning to the land of the living. However, now alive once again and back on Earth, he sees that things are way different now. Professor X is dead, Cyclops is on the run, the X-Men are literally divided, but Nightcrawler being the heart and soul and optimist of the team is like, you know what? We're gonna fix this. So as not to squander his second chance on life, he teams up with Wolverine to try to safeguard the future from mutant kind who wish to do harm. Which of course means more swashbuckling, let's face it, Nightcrawler's love for pirates and swashbuckling is one of the coolest unique aspects of the character. Then more recently in 2019, we have Age of X-Men The Amazing Nightcrawler, which is a five issue series. It deals with Nightcrawler being a member of the X-Men and one of the biggest celebrities in Hollywood starring in several blockbuster films. It's definitely a fun read and Nightcrawler has way more awesome story arcs, but now it's time for some powers and abilities. Nightcrawler's main ability is teleportation. When teleporting, Kurt leaves behind a puff of blue, black, and purple smoke. Kurt has mastered this skill and is able to bring other people with him when teleporting. However, his teleporting range does have its limitations. First and foremost, he must be able to visualize where I've visited the place he's going. If he can't visualize where he's teleporting, he risks teleporting himself into a solid object which could kill him. While his teleporting range is limited, in times of great stress, he can teleport great distances like the time he teleported Hope Summers from Las Vegas to San Francisco. But if he teleports in quick bursts, he can cover great distances in a short amount of time. Because of Kurt's mastery of teleportation, he's almost impossible to catch, which makes him extremely deadly. Although you don't have to really worry about that too much as Kurt has a high regard for human life. With that said, if he wanted to, he's mastered his teleporting to the point where he could theoretically grab a hold of someone's limbs or head and with concentration, just teleport that specific part away and we all know where that would go. Nightcrawler is also a fantastic acrobat, being trained in the circus growing up mixed with his teleporting skills. But on top of being a master acrobat, he's a very skilled swordsman loving swashbuckling. And despite his demonic appearance, he's one of the purest kind hearts the X-Men has to offer. But with that said, let's move on to reading recommendations. Check out Giant Size X-Men Annual 1, Amazing X-Men Volume 2, Issues 1 through 5, titled The Quest for Nightcrawler, Excalibur Volume 1, Issues 42 through 46, The Nightcrawler 4 issue miniseries from 1985, and Age of X-Men The Amazing Nightcrawler, Issues 1 through 5. That should be more than enough to get you all started. But there you have it, friends, the history of Nightcrawler. Be sure to jump into the comments and let us know what you think of the character and what other history of episodes you would like to see in the future. Other than that, we'll see you next time when we talk about all things comics.